Hello dearest friends, welcome or welcome back to my channel, The Anna and the Book Hunt. We're already halfway throughout March, which is kind of mind-boggling, but time flies when you're having fun, right? I mean, in my household, we've been having a lot of fun, specifically because it was my son's birthday at the start of the month. He recently became five years old and it's the best kind of age. I mean, if you have kids, you probably know it's really the best kind of age. So yeah, basically this month has been flying by and at the same time I've been reading a lot uh, I had a lot of fun with a couple of reads that I'm going to discuss today it's going to be a recent reads video today that I'm going to post and books that I'm going to discuss that I read in the first part of March and I am going to skip over a couple of books that I just recently read in the past couple of days because I'm participating in the Romance Takeover Readathon and those books I'm actually going to discuss in a separate video so I just thought that it's best to focus on the books that I didn't read for the readathon so for today's video I'm going to discuss nine books that I read from the 1st to the 14th of March and there were a couple of interesting ones, ones that are very hype, that are recent releases, ones that I just had on my TBR for a long time. So without further ado, let's just go ahead and dive into the books. The first book is a book that I'm not sure, I think it's a recent release. It's a kind of paranormal young adult fantasy book. It's called The Crimson Moth by Kristen Ciccarelli, I think the name is pronounced. But the interesting thing about this book is, if, if I'm not mistaken, this is the UK version, so the UK title for this book. In the States, it's called something else, I'm not sure, but the cover for the UK version is really pretty. I'm going to post it up so you can see it. This book is an interesting one. It's a young adult fantasy, but I think more leaning towards paranormal because it involves a witch and a witch hunter and basically the romances between those two so it's very much an enemies to lovers situation and this is the first book within an installment so we definitely don't get the full scope of their relationship within the first book and then in this book i had some thoughts on this book so the heroine is a witch right and for her to be able to practice her magic or witchery I don't know what it's called she needs blood and basically what she does is she uses her period blood to be able to like store it so she has enough blood to be able to do the things that she needs to do because what she's doing is she's kind of like almost like the Robin Hood of her society she is part of the elite and she presents herself as being very aloof very kind of almost dumb-like within society so no one suspects that she has any ulterior motives because witchery is obviously is forbidden and witches are being hunted so basically uh, she is playing on two fronts she is an aristocrat and at the same time she's also a witch and the thing with the period blood just kind of icked me out i don't know if anyone who has read this book felt the same but every time that she needed to use blood or gather the blood i was like mm, i'm not sure whether that was the best idea that she could come up with that the author could come up with but yeah basically that icked me out and at the same time also so the heroine is very much infatuated with the witch hunter the witch hunter is also her best friend's brother and the best friend is actually also in love with her so it's kind of like a vicious circle situation going on because she is in love with the brother who actually doesn't like her and she is not in love with her best friend but her best friend is in love with her so it's kind of like an interesting pining situation between multiple people what can i say i don't know i think i didn't connect very well with this book i also didn't enjoy it as much as i had hoped because when i heard the premise you know which witch hunter and enemies to lovers situation i thought that i was really going to get like a dynamic kind of a book where it's going to be well paced and i would be very much invested in the story I was not so I think I gave this three stars yeah I gave this three stars and I'm not going to continue on in the series next up I read a very interesting novella I've been looking for some reads that involve merit and trouble and I'm not sure why I think I typed into KU merit and trouble as a trope and it gave me some recommendations and this novella popped up and I saw that it had a high rating so I was like let's try it out 
And I have to say that this book, it's called Familiar Stranger by Caitlin Moss. It's not your typical marriage and trouble <laughs> book. I actually wouldn't call it a marriage and trouble. I would say that it's more like a second chance romance. It involves the heroine Anna who is presented in present and past timeline and in both the timelines there is a wedding going on wedding for different people obviously and those weddings are both for family members of hers in the past timeline her sister is getting married and she very desperately needs a date to the wedding because everyone is kind of fawning over her that she is still single and she doesn't want to have that attention upon her and she is at the hotel bar just before the wedding where she meets this very handsome and interesting stranger and they strike up a very interesting conversation together and they agree that he would go as her date um, kind of like a fake date like he's her boyfriend for some time uh, they present a united front in front of the family so she doesn't get any crap from them and they have a blast now in the present timeline she is married with kids and we find out that her relationship is just not what she envisioned for herself she's not happy and they're actually going to get a divorce and she and her husband are going to this wedding it's actually her sister's child who is getting married so it's like 15 years in the future and they're going to this wedding together for the last time before they break it to their family that they're going to get a divorce and this is where I'm going to leave the plot because it's a very short novella I think it's not even 100 pages but it took me for a spin this one I really enjoyed it I give it four stars if you've watched the past couple of wrap-ups that I've done you will know that I'm working my way through the throat of glass series by Sarah J Maas I just recently finished air of fire and that one has to be my favorite so far I mean we started off with throat of glass three stars and then assassin's blade I gave three and a half to four stars then crown of midnight I gave four stars and this one i'm definitely given five stars so air of fire for me i just loved it so much the development of seliana the development of her relationship with the new characters that are being introduced i'm just not going to say too much because i don't want to spoil anything we're already at book four so this book really I was so invested in it and I really cannot wait to continue on in the series. I have the audiobook available to me for the next one, but I just need to finish the couple of books that I have on my TBR before I get to that one. But I definitely want to, fi want to finish it before the month is up. And I'm just invested in the story. I really am enjoying the world building. I'm enjoying the character development. I'm enjoying the romances. I'm enjoying... Uh, the politics within it. So yeah, this one is definitely my favorite so far. And the next up, I read a new release that was highly anticipated, I think, by the whole romance community. It's A Bride by Ali Hazelwood. This book is the first foray that Ali Hazelwood makes into paranormal romances. And I'm not very good at explaining the plots of paranormal romances because I've not read very many. I'm one of the few romance readers that hasn't read very many paranormal romances, but I'm giving it a go. This is a romance between our heroine Misery and the hero Lo. She's a vampire, he's a werewolf shifter. And within the world that they live in, the humans, vampires and werewolves don't have the best kind of a political relationship so they definitely are wary of each other and they've thought of this plan to have very prominent figures within their communities give their children as kind of like an exchange to have collateral to not start wars between each other or something like that i'm not sure if i'm explaining it right but basically misery is one of those um children who was given to the humans and she lived with them for like 10 years or so and the thing is because she has lived with them for so long she kind of doesn't really connect well with her own species so she's not very much fond of the vampires she connects more with the humans and then her father who is a very prominent vampire decides that he's going to marry her off to one of the prominent 
uh, people in the wolf shifting community because there is kind of a shift between loyalties between the three species so he decides to marry her off to Lo. And it's a very, at least it starts off very promising for me at least because you definitely sense already from the start when Lo meets Misery that he very much is affected by her. She is so out of her depth. She is so aloof when it comes to what is happening between herself and the werewolf that she is basically like he smells her he immediately knows that she is very special to him because of her smell and she thinks that he thinks that she stinks <laughs> which is just hilarious and it's just it's fun it's it's not what i expected i expected a bit more it was kind of a little almost like childish and also the miscommunications the uh, typical ali hazelwood uh, type of communication where they don't finish their sentences and then the other person mainly the heroine assuming things about the hero without him actually having had a chance to explain himself is what sometimes drives me up the wall so i think this is the weakest of ali's books in my opinion at least i really did enjoy it because it was fun it had fun banter within it and the world building was all right but when it comes to the romance i didn't feel it as much as like um for example love theoretically or love on the brain so for me this one was a three and a half star read and then i read a couple more new releases and i had a lot of fun with most of them let me explain myself the first one that i'm going to mention is by christina forrest is the partner plot this is a second chance romance and i really enjoyed this one i read the audiobook for it and i was just so immersed in the story i think that i was really connecting with the characters mainly because i think second chance romances have such a solid ground for developing a lot of good premise for the love relationship between the two characters we see some kind of past relationship where you definitely know that they had some kind of strong feelings towards one another and for one another reason they needed to break up and then in the future or in the present when they get back together uh, you definitely already have a foundation of explored feelings and in this situation we've got our heroine violet who used to be in a relationship with our hero xavier when they were in high school and they were end game both of them were so much in love with each other they knew that they wanted to get married together they were absolutely smitten and in love with each other and both of them had very big dreams she wanted to be become a very trendy stylist for like the biggest stars and he wanted to play basketball on a high level he already knew that he was a promising talent and that he was going to get scouted for universities and then everything went wrong when Xavier went to the university to try out for uh, the scholarship or whatever and he got injured so his dreams and his idea for what his future was going to look like totally fell apart and that is where they break up essentially so many years later when they both have gone into their respective fields of choice she has become the trendy stylist that she wanted to become and he has gone in a completely different direction he has become an english teacher at a high school they meet up by chance in las vegas and they fake marry each other <laughs> i'm going to leave it at that um this fake marriage definitely plays a bit of a role into how they develop their relationship further because both of them need the fake marriage for specific reasons but at the same time they know that they have a history together that they need to hash out and that they need to get over the lost feelings and then continue on with kind of like a fresh slate so yeah i was really invested in their story it was really romantic in my opinion and i really enjoyed it i gave it four stars the next new release that I read is Swift and Saddled by Lila Sage. The first book I read a couple of months ago, Done and Dusted, and I have to say that I really did not enjoy that one very much. I think I gave it like two and a half to three stars. It just wasn't a favorite of mine and I was very kind of hesitant to pick this one up, but I had heard better things about this one, so I decided to give it a try. 
This one follows the brother of the heroine from book one. Uh, his name is Wes. And then a newcomer to their small town. Her name is Ada. She is hired to help with the refurbishment of one of their houses on their property where they want to make it like a B&B or something like that. And Wes is the person who has the vision for the whole project. So he's going to be working together with her. But before the whole project starts, she is uh, she arrives at the small town. She goes to the bar that is owned by the hero from book one. And she has an immediate kind of like eye contact with Wes without knowing who he is. And they share a kiss together. So both of them definitely have an attraction to one another from like day one, but they develop their uh, relationship more and more as they're working together and they definitely appreciate each other for different kind of things that they bring to the table once they get to know each other. So I really enjoyed that part of the book. But then I had some issues with it too. The first one being that Wes is someone who is described to have depression. And for me, it felt like it was kind of glossed over. I mean, it's not necessary for uh, the hero to be depressed on page for me to feel that he has depression, but it's like he mentions it once or twice and he kind of mentions it in ways that he wants to convince the heroine that the depression that he has suffered kind of serves a purpose for showing her something about himself. And I'm like, I'm not sure that that is the best way to represent depression in the book. Um, it feels like it's told and not shown in some way. I mean, again, I don't need to see specifically the depression on page to know and appreciate that the character has depression. But in this context, it felt like it was a plot device. And then additionally, the heroine, she was so insecure. She was talking herself down almost every single thought that she had about herself was something negative and that was really kind of getting to me at some point and because she was so insecure it felt like Wes's character like he was written specifically for her it didn't feel like he was a three-dimensional character but more like a two-dimensional character who is serving the purpose of getting her out of her state of mind so I did enjoy some parts of the book. I enjoyed also the spicy times and the renovation. Those aspects within the book I enjoyed and really got me through the story. But those things about the plot that I just mentioned really took me out of the story of enjoying the romance. So I gave this one three and a half stars. And then we've got a book that I have a lot of thoughts on. <laughs> It's A Fate Inked in Blood by Daniel L. Jensen. This is a new release. It's a fantasy kind of um, Norse mythology retelling kind of a book. I don't know how to classify it. And on paper, it sounded like I was going to love this and I was give, going to give this five stars. And also the start of the book, maybe throughout the 30 to 40 percent of the book, that is what I thought. But then it went downhill. <laughs> so I think just a lot of things went wrong within the book. Let me just start. I'm not sure if I can explain the plot very well. The heroine within this book, she lives in this Norris village. She is married off by her family to this horrible fisherman person who, because of his wealth, basically he vouches that he's going to take care of her family. So essentially she's sacrificing her own happiness and self to be with him so that her family can be well off. And she hates her existence while she's married to him. And he is also kind of abusive to her. So at the start of the book, we find out that if it were up to the heroine, she definitely wants a different type of life for herself. She actually wants to be a warrior. And she meets this guy who is part of the warriors of the Vikings, who basically is someone like her idol and they have this flirty banter with each other and he actually proposes to kill her husband so that she is free. She declines the offer but then a lot of things start to happen that kind of progress the story on and it turns out that she definitely plays a key part in their Norse gods world. <laughs> I don't want to mention too much about the plot itself anymore because I'm not going to do it any justice. Just know that it's Norse mythology, a lot of Norse gods and Vikings. So that part of the story I loved. Oh, and I have to say that 
um, the romance until the 50-60% mark of the book. I was hooked. I really was like shipping the hero and heroine to be together and to run away together and just leave everything behind. But after that 60% mark, everything just turned chaotic for me, especially the heroine's decisions, thoughts, and like one moment she's saying one thing and then really literally the next thing that she does is the complete opposite thing of what she is saying. And at some point I was like, girl, make up your mind. What are you doing? Who, what is going on? I was just so confused most of the time. And it just really, this type of indecision that she had, like thinking one thing, deciding something else, and then going back on that, it just really started to irk me, like very much. And also the ending, obviously this is going to be the first book within, I'm not sure how many books there are going to be within this series, but um, I knew that there was going to be some kind of a cliffhanger and I enjoyed the cliffhanger, that's not the point. But the end had so many things that really prove my point that there were so many chaotic things going on that were not. And, and it's all the heroine's fault, honestly, like the hero, I'm not blaming at all, uh, even though he plays a very interesting role in the end. I was almost screaming at the heroine, like, get a grip, just do something consistent for once, please. So I really was so whiplashed by the end of the book. Like I had so many things that I enjoyed, but then so many things that I didn't either. So I left it at a three star mark. My apologies for rambling so much about the last book. I still have two books to go. So let me just talk quickly about those two as well. The next one is The Friendship Study by Ruby Barrett. This book was a very interesting book. I have to say that I had absolutely zero expectations going into it, but I saw that Ava from Ava Romance Books was reading that. She posted on her Instagram stories that she absolutely loved this book. She gave it five stars, I believe. And I was like, okay, I want to try this out because I absolutely adore friends to lovers romances. This one is a friends to friends with benefits to lovers situation where we've got the hero and heroine. They share a mutual friend. For the hero, it's actually his ex-boyfriend because the hero is bisexual. And then for the heroine, this mutual friend is someone that she goes to the university with. She is actually a lecturer at the university and she is professing some kind of like witchcraft studies, which is very cool. And the two of them meet through this mutual friend. He actually sets them up on a date because both of them have been miserable. Both of them have this very lacking love life. So this friend decided to set them up on a date. They go on this date and the date is very awkward and weird, but they do end up having some uh, physical attraction to one another. So they do make out on the first date, but after that, it's kind of like silent <laughs> between them. And both of them are also working through different issues within their life. She definitely feels like she wants to make it in her academic life, but because her family is very well regarded in the academic life, everyone feels like uh, she's like a Nepo baby and she wants to break out of that mold. And also she was really very badly played by her ex uh, boyfriend or fiance. He cheated on her with her best friend. So she has a lot of issues to go through within her personal life. And he also has a lot of issues to go through in his personal life because he used to be a firefighter. He loved his life. He loved his inner circle of friends but he was in a very bad car accident that kind of took away his entire life. And the two of them have very interesting things to progress through within the plot. And what happens is this friend of theirs, their mutual friend, he offers that they participate in this friendship study at the university so that they can try to make new friends. And they both sign up for it, but the interesting caveat within the plot is that when they participate in this friendship study, they cannot fall in love. So they really sign a contract where they state that they're going to remain friends. At the same time, the more time they spend together, the more feelings they develop and a friendship with benefit situation commences from the whole story. And it's a very interesting book. I mean, there's a lot of depth 
into it because of all of the issues that the two protagonists go through and they really talk everything out and I love that about the book. So I have to say that I really enjoyed this one. This was a very different type of read and again I really love Friends to Lovers romances because we first see a very different development of their relationship meaning that they first bond kind of spiritually and at the same time the physical attraction awakens so they really have a very special connection by the end of the book so yeah this one was a four star read for me and then on a whim i decided to pick up a book that i knew nothing about the book is called the contract by melanie morland and it's a boss employee fake dating turned into marriage of convenience romance we've got our heroine Catherine, who is the personal assistant for the hero, Richard, and he is an absolute douchebag. He makes her life miserable, but he basically tests her limits so that he knows that she's going to do everything for him, basically. I think he works in like an advertisement, um, kind of very big shot firm. And at the start of the book, he wants to make partner. He has made a lot of effort to get the position, but he's being passed over. So he decides that he wants to do something very radical and that is switch um, firms. So he wants to go to a different firm, but the only firm that is a very firm competitor for the other place is a place where the CEO is very particular. He wants the person who joins their firm to be a family man and someone who is very invested not so much in the cutthroat world that they live in but more in a family oriented type of a firm so richard decides that he needs to enlist someone's help namely catherine's to show this ceo that he can be a family man that he can be invested in a relationship so they sign this contract where they're going to fake date and potentially marry each other to prove to this new company that he can be part of their kind of culture. So obviously, <laughs> well, at the start of the book, I did appreciate that within the book. Obviously the, uh, the heroine, she did appreciate his looks at the start of the book, but she really hated his guts and he really didn't feel too much about Catherine. He did find that she was like perfect because she was executing ev everything that he uh, kind of threw into her lap so he was like okay so she has some backbone and she is amazing at what she does so he definitely appreciates her qualities but there is no romance between them at the start of the book the romance really develops as they really start to get to know one another on a different level when they start to live together when they start to go to these functions together so this really reminded me of the favor by suzanne wright and i really enjoyed that one and this one i really enjoyed as well so i gave this one four stars these were all the books that i managed to finish at the first part of march please let me know if you've read any of the books that i discussed and what you thought about them specifically about the new releases because there's a lot of new releases on this list let me know if you were irked by the same books that i had some issues with i just want to feel validated in my feelings here and i hope to see you very soon in the next one please don't forget to like comment and subscribe and, and have a wonderful marvelous day happy reading take care and bye bye